the Eastern Orthodox religion? Because, you know, Catholicism, it's all been westernized. Oh, don't you know, St. Peter went among the children and each bunny rabbit had a tiny mushroom that loved its mother. And the Eastern Orthodox <laughs> saints are just like, this is St. Kyotonich. He killed and lose his skin. <laughs> oh, were you done? This is why we no eat on Thursday. We're done. You know, that was the story? That is it's the story. He lost his skin, and what do we do? He died. We no eat. Okay. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because, and I believe this was the exact justification I used when I tried to convince Eli to do this show in the first place, fuck it, it'll probably be fun. I'm your host, <laughs> No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Comrade Noah, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Very excited. This is the greatest movie We've ever done ever. I think it's the greatest we've ever done. I, I think it might be. Yeah, it, it might be my go to like, hey, what do you do for a living? Let me show you. This may be my new answer. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I wish I could do space. This is why we need a video component so that I could puppetly walk into frame for this <laughs> podcast. Like fucking Vince Vaughn filled with a bug alien. Yeah, the yeah. Only every, way. every time you like look to the right, you could do so as though you were on one of those turntables from Wheel of Fortune <laughs> or something. Yeah. So tell us, Ethan, <laughs> what will we be breaking down today? We watched Children Against Wizards. Well, that's or, one of the names of it. Or yeah. Kids, <laughs> kids v. Warlocks or something like that. It's the story of that time, the... Jewish Nazi warlock cartel tried to take over the world in 2004 and had to fight against a Russian spy child who learned about Jesus anti magic uh -huh. from an old Greek man who's into bestiality. The, uh, the, the bestiality was into right? him, but other than that, <laughs> yes. Yes, you had that right. That's the movie. I'm serious. I didn't just, like, make anything up. Nope. That's the movie. Oh, yeah. No, you're absolutely correct. And and we should point out that this is a Russian movie, so it's been translated in a number of different ways. You'll, you'll find it as kids versus wizards, children against wizards, children versus wizards, kids against warlocks, all kind of shit. But, and it's it's worth checking all of those to find it if you have trouble. You sure is. <laughs> so, sure is. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved that time you watched a puppeteer die halfway through his show... <laughs> But you wish the message was written by a man who convinced your grandma that Hillary eats babies in a pizza place's non-existent basement. You will love this movie. It's the animation is so goddamn weird. Like at one point I wrote as a joke in my notes, it's like they rotoscoped Muppets. But as the movie went on. I started to honestly ask myself, like, holy shit, did they just rotoscope Muppets? They Is they yeah. did that? I feel yeah. like they did. It's a possibility. I want there are there are animation mistakes in this movie that I feel like you would have to go out of your way to do. Like the guy with the one eyebrow? Yes, there there are mistakes. <laughs> That are based on gravity, which doesn't exist in animation. Like something will fall and I'll be like, why would that fall? <laughs> There's no gravity in the animation verse. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah. It, everything Eli just said. Best worst animation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it really, truly best worst in every possible way, right? Because in some ways it's incredible. Sometimes they'll back away from something and the textures are all just photorealistic and you're like, oh, this is really well. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. That guy's got too many bones in his face. Okay, when they had when they tried to do birds, it got insane. <laughs> it got so fucking insane. You know what it reminded me of? I don't know if you guys had this experience, but when I was a kid, you would play video games and video games just worked. And then graphics became a thing. And the first time you put in a CD for a game that was too advanced for your home computer, that's what this animation looks like. Oh, fuck. I got to find out what a graphics card is and get one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the graphics card wasn't good enough to have like three construction paper birds be like three different frames of a bird going across the screen. That's unreal. They, they have trouble with people walking. Yep. Just like oh, a ton of, of the walking is, is some of the worst part. One object moves 
is apparently like pretty difficult when it comes to animation. One person holds an object is too hard for them. One person walks down a hallway and actually gets further down the hallway is too hard for them. It's insane what they get wrong. But the best, the the, the most incredible example of the bad animation is my best worst. It's one hour, 13 minutes and 50 seconds into the movie and it lasts six seconds. And I really implore you to just check this out. Best worst, Punchy Kiki. It's oh, God, yes. It's, this is the part where the guy comes in, the, the two kids are about to get caught, and the guy comes in and kicks the asses of the two guards. It is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. There are not words, and there cannot be words nope, that just describe how silly this shit is. Nope, it's, it's like 9-11 and blowjobs. You just got to experience it, everybody. <laughs> and so I'm going to take the easy one here. I'm going to go with best worst religion. Okay. And look. I know that's a big claim. I know that's a big claim. We review a lot of bad religion, a lot of bad beliefs on this show. But Eastern Orthodoxy, first of all, this is our first like exposure to it on this podcast. Mm -hmm. And it is as close to bad time travel as I can possibly. (laughs) If you're holding like an ancient two level cross up to a guy who's holding a machine gun, something is off in the (laughs) timeline. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we've got a lot of what, a lot of the, and a lot of fuck on the other side of this break. So we're going to keep it brief, and then we'll dive into all the rotoscoped Muppets that are Kids versus Wizards. Agent Spetsky, Agent Kromovich. Yes, sir. We have new assignment for Ministry of Propaganda. Very important. Okay, what is it? So you know how we mostly disrupt Western democracy? Of course, of course. And cover up war crimes. Both historical and present. Da, da. Yes, yes. So now Russia would like you to make a Shrek. What? Sorry, you want us to what? To, to make a Shrek. You, you know the Shrek? Big green? I, I have seen the Shrek. Yes. You mean like uh, bootleg copies to disrupt the sales of the Shrek? Ooh, we can do that. No, 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 no. A new Shrek, but it is about Russia and our good friend Jesus. You you want us to make Shrek about Russia and our good friend Jesus Christ? Exactly, yes. But, but Commander, we are not animators. We are not storytellers. Yes, we are largely forcibly recruited pedophiles. Pedophiles. I yes. know this, I know. But you make a Shrek anyway, or else, perhaps. Uh, we make a Shrek. One we Shrek. Make a Shrek. Coming right up. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up by establishing that Eli was not exaggerating when he referred to this movie last week as official Russian propaganda. Nope. <laughs> That's the the opening thing. That's on the screen. Yep. That's the first thing is like, this is a Russian propaganda film in text. Yeah. That's a weird thing to announce in the opening credits. Just right. Do the propaganda, I guess. <laughs> don't say it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I, I know that Top Gun is technically like Air Force propaganda and a bunch of other movies are too. But we don't start Top Gun by being like, from the bottom corner of our high school class comes Top Gun. No, we're just like, you got to be chill. So and and after we get the propaganda warning, it comes up and it has this like long quote about what it means to be a Russian and whether it's you know, like a language or whether it's a fucking seed in your heart or whatever. As an NFL fan, this struck me as an insufficiently jingoistic opening. But yeah, <laughs> see, I wrote in my notes. OK, I thought the FBI warning at the front of our movies was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're weirdly mad about it. Apparently, this is like a big controversy. I guess in Russia, people who are like, yeah, Russian means you're from Russia. But then the people who made this are like, no, no. It also means you love Jesus and the motherland and polonium darts and Mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir Putin shirtless (laughs) on a horse and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what Russia means. Yes, exactly. I guess it's kind of like America. Like Russia, according to this movie, is America, according to Americans who say that. Right. This is very much a make Russia great again propaganda piece. So we open up, we're, we're panning up from the sea to the uh, sigil of Baphomet painted on the wall. And right then we're like, oh, wow, this, um, this animation is fantastic. <laughs> the CGI looked 
communist. I don't even know what that mm-hmm. means, but it looked like it was made <laughs> by like one brand, state brand CGI. Yeah. Well, the first time it really fell apart was when those doors opened because we see this like we're looking at a castle and it's got these big ornate doors and everything and it all looks really good. But then the doors open and you realize that there's no depth whatsoever and everything's just been slapped onto surfaces like they used the Doom engine or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's definitely a moment as I was watching this where I was like, oh, yeah, animation is hard. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when it really broke down is when they because this car's leaving the big castle, the big creepy castle or whatever. And then they cut inside and we see a human being for the first time. And we're like, oh, rotoscoped Ooh. Muppet. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> At this point, I was writing in my notes. OK, how bad does animation have to be before I'm legally allowed to stop calling it animation? Like, You're right. If they just wave a drawing at the camera, I don't have to call it animation, <laughs> it's right? In animation. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but this guy is leaving this castle. There's smoke following him ominously in his limousine. And we pan all the way out from that to a satellite. <laughs> just the Russian government being like, we have satellites. Satellite. Anyway, moving on with the movie. We invented fucking sad first don't know if you noticed this this one was up there first first so, yeah. <laughs> and then we get the um we get the title screen on mine it said children against wizards i love the extent to which this movie can't decide what it's called in america and then we get a, a chapter title that says part one the evil returns the parts in this movie are insane because there's seven parts but the first one is like half an hour long and the rest of them are all like six minutes or whatever yeah uh, but this is part one the evil returns it's like a D&D minus plot. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but suddenly we're not in animation anymore, right? So we see this helicopter land and a soldier gets out and he talks to another soldier. And at first I was like, Wait, are the Russians just pretending they're this good at animation, right? <laughs> he starts understand. doing like a weird robo walk. Ah, yes, I am also a Shrek. Yeah. I don't know if you know, I'm a Shrek. <laughs> But the one soldier's telling the other that the evil has begun rising again and that mages and sorcerers are, quote, becoming active. Okay, this conversation is so matter of fact. Yeah. They like hug and then he's like, yeah, good times. So the evil rises again, you know, mages and sorcerers. Anyway, and the other guy's like, yeah, yeah, yeah evil sorcerers, mages, so, yeah, no bigs. So where, cool. you get a, where you get a bite around here, huh? So. Yeah. <laughs> And so I Googled this at this point. I was like, is there like a mages and sorcerers thing in Russia? Yes, Mm -hmm. there is. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't know if as an American, I'm allowed to make fun of this because our guy's just a goat demon instead of a major or a sorcerer. But like the way that fucking Tucker Carlson talks about the green M&M, they're crazy. People are like, just so you know, bunch of Jew sorcerers are definitely trying to curse your babies. (laughs) Absolutely. So we get that quick scene and then we got the commander of like the military boy scouts or something yeah he goes into this tent where there's these three kids and he's got a he's got something very important to tell them but first he has to tell them a story now the story (laughs) he has to tell them is the movie yep right so the rest of this movie is going to be framed as this camp commander talking to these three cadets and explaining the movie to them while he lays seductively across their beds yeah it's a little yeah a little weird yeah (laughs) <laughs> so, a lot of canteen boy vibes not not pleasant yeah. he says I'm going to start with a story that looks like a fairy tale he says looks I'm like in that it's animated um, and yes that is the answer but he explains to them about the conspiracy of the masters the masters planned to take over Russia with magic and this all happened apparently 15 years ago so we doodly do back to 15 years ago We cut to the smoke demons accompanying that same dude who drove out of the castle. He's now on a private jet. He is Leonard, used to be a promising Russian student, but decided to become a mage and or wizard instead. The Eli Bosnick story. An atheist who believes in mage wizard saint (laughs) magic. Yeah. Yes, he said he he quote developed a theory of absence of God end quote. (laughs) Do you have to develop that theory? It's just there isn't. I just developed it. I just wrote my notes like, we atheists in our occult magic, we are notorious <laughs> for it. Yeah. I'm just picturing him staring at a notebook. Blank isn't real. This is close. <laughs> this is close. Just defending his thesis for a PhD. No, I'm done. Yes. <laughs> there are none. But we learned that after he was an atheist, he learned the occult in Scotland. And can I say, can I say, 
great place for the occult to hide. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Scotland. No one's going to be looking for the dark forces of Satan in Scotland. So then, okay, so now we have to meet the mustachioed Lieutenant General Timothy Aropkin. He's the <laughs> commander of the military school. The mustaches in this movie are aggressive. I guess, is, is that a big thing in Russia? Is everybody rocking just mustache? It may be, but the reason why everybody has a distinct and weird fucking mustache is because these animators were so bad, that's the only way we could tell <laughs> characters apart from each other. They had one mustache budget. <laughs> they were like, we'll figure it out. Yes! <laughs> this movie was made in the Roblox character creator, so they were like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Give him a, a peg leg and two mono three monocles. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> So, yeah, so we get him like welcoming his cadets to the military school. They all hooray in the manner of imprisoned banshees wailing to escape. <laughs> that noise stayed in my head. They literally do the muffins like arms in the air. <laughs> it's so fucking yeah. weird. Again, with the animation, too, the cadets, they're all standing in line trying to be serious, but they're like having trouble standing the animated yeah. cadets. Yes. Like they look like drunk drivers. Trying to stand, you know, normal <laughs> yes, after yes. getting pulled over when the cops yes. looking at him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but just reeling a little bit. Yeah. So then we cut to a Ropkin's office where we're going to meet Sebastian Kuprianovich. I just I like the fact that I can pronounce that just by saying a Kuprianovich. Sounds great. Uh, I, I wrote Sebastian something Russian is doing. Yeah. Something. OK. No, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. He's Russia's chief fucking occult wizard hunter. And he's mm -hmm. there to tell Arupkin about the High Academy of World's Mages and the threat, the existential threat that they pose to Russia. Yeah. Right. I love how, like, this is such a serious conversation. But before it starts, he has to be like, so there's this really, okay, you got a, like a giant antique thing on your desk. Thank you. He, I was literally about to. It's really distracting. It's so big. It's the only thing on your desk. And the two character models cannot interact with it, right? It's supposed to be like a tea server, mm -hmm. but these two, they, like, they apps, they might as well try to come through the screen and strangle us to death. So they're just, the two character models just like vaguely slap against the side of this insane looking hookah and then like tea pours into a cup kind you know a tea liquid pours kind of from a faucet into a bowl shaped hologram and they're like there tea and again this thing that's sitting in the middle it, like it is so perfectly and lovingly rendered with all of these different reflections <laughs> yeah. and you can tell where the lights <laughs> and everything around it is like nah man we're really phoning this in why did you go all out <laughs> yeah. You, you know what it reminds me of? If any of our listeners play Dungeons and Dragons on Roll20, they have a bunch of free tokens, which look like shit. But occasionally, professional designers will just throw one of their designs into the free token barrel. So it'll be like, look at this beautiful three-dimensional dragon. And here's Skook the chair. That's what this movie <laughs> is animated like. Also, we learned that this boss guy, his name is Samovar. And he has this giant ornate samovar of coffee or tea on his desk. Like, do you think it's supposed to be that he likes the name so much that he accentuated that by having this? Oh, there as you the go. Centerpiece, or there was a confusion when the and then you will animate samovar, and then he comes, shows up, and he's like, "I worked for two weeks on giant tea." Oh, you met the guy. Sure, so you're going to be mad at me. So, yeah, so he shows the satellite images to a rope kind of all the different like wizards wizarding in at, at, at fucking Scottish Hogwarts. Right. Because that's what this is. This is Hogwarts. Yeah. The High Academy of World's Mages. And Ho yes. yeah, Hogwarts is like one of their branch colleges, I guess, of Han. Probably. Yeah. He says Han originated from the German military institute, the Nazi one. So this is like a Nazi origin cartel of wizards that wants to attack Russia. That's the plot now. Yes. Jews. But it's also yeah. Jews. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The movie doesn't know. Like, the movie can't decide whether it's Jewish or Nazi. Well, so that uh, that's the thing, though. In Russia, those two things are not distinct. They're yep. just bad, and they're both bad. Well, yeah, but, but but the key is is that they don't really focus on all the Jewish stuff when it comes to <laughs> Nazism because they're also anti-Semitic as fuck. I don't mean to like paint the entire fucking country. I'm talking about the hoorah America 
version of the people who would who would enjoy this. The propaganda department who made this movie. A exactly, exactly. But yes, that that's that's the reason is that those two things they, that that is not a contradiction to them, right? Yeah. The fact that they you know invade Ukraine and and say it's because they're so Nazi ish and it's like really is the guy running the country Jewish? But <laughs> so yeah, who is one of those Jewish Nazis? They also <laughs> slide into Slavic as a slur word constantly too. So like yeah. the whole thing is like evil people are Nazi, Slavic, and Jewish. Whatever, just go with it. They're evil. <laughs> magic. Aren't Russians Slavic? No. Some of them, a lot of them. Yeah. Rush, yeah, we, I, I we say, clarified I, at the beginning. I, I never caught that they were saying Slavics were bad. They, I, I know they said that the Antichrist was supposed to be Slavic because they've heard the accents. They've seen the movies that we've seen. Yeah. You know, they know. <laughs> no, we clarified at the beginning. The only real Russian is people who is loyal to movie Shrek we make. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, exactly. <laughs> but the most important thing here that Seb has to explain to Arupkin is that only a teenager could infiltrate the evil wizard school. They tried it with adults. They get sniffed out right away. So he needs to find a couple of kids from his academy that he can trust to infiltrate fucking Jewish Hogwarts, Jewish Nazi Hogwarts. Yeah. And I do have to say, I am glad they went with that plan because at first the general says, let's deal with them the old way. And I wrote, yikes, I do not want to watch a movie about starving Hogwarts to death and then trying to erase the historical <laughs> no, records of no. it. So and then so and he shows him this video, too, of like he's like, you know, here's the parts of the world where they've they've taken over. And then he shows some holographic video from like inside the wizard school. I guess their satellites can zoom in through the roof, but only sometimes. Yeah, it's not quite clear. This is the first time we see all the kids like zooping around on their brooms. <laughs> OK, wait, they're not just zooping around on their brooms. They're zooping around on their brooms. In between fire-breathing gargoyles? Yes. I yeah. feel like this, this <laughs> wizard school is just an ocean nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we meet the leader of Hogwarts. He also has a very distinct mustache. You know, very different looking one. And he it, it, he's telling he's got like everybody assembled in the like main hall or whatever. And he's telling them that the chosen one, that is the Antichrist, is there and he will be introduced into the movie very soon. Spoiler, no the fuck he won't. Okay. He will not. He will be introduced into the movie, I'm going to go ahead and say, 18 seconds before it's over. <laughs> sort of, yes. <laughs> yeah, so this guy announces that they figured out how to beat the Russian magic blocking property that all Russian people have. That's mm -hmm. according to the propaganda ministry. Russian people can't be magicked, I guess. Right, because of their love for their country and their love for Jesus. And that Jesus. is the main point of this story, yes. Okay, yes. but the head Nazi wizard guy is like, okay, but there's a prophecy about a chosen one. We've found the chosen one. So like Neo from the, they found, they found Neo Nazi. And now they're like, <laughs> gonna like do the prophecy with fucking Neo Nazi. Yeah, that's the plan. So and then we we very briefly dig into like the origin of the order or or lack thereof. And we, we learned that like they tried the the order originated when they were trying to keep the Russians from turning Christian back in the day. Yeah. Right. Because the order, quote, didn't want another powerful country in Europe. And I'm like, oh, they nailed it then based on this <laughs> yeah. recent invasion. I also I just want to say that this is where the movie like sets aside and is like, hey, just so you guys know, we mean Jews. Like, I, I'm worried that you might just think we're talking about wizard, but we do mean Jews. So now we're going to show you a bunch of historical pictures of Jews. Just so you really get it when I say when we mean the order, you know what I'm saying? The order. Yeah. So the, the order was inspired by Judas's betrayal. They're big Judas fans there at the order. Mm -hmm. But then the, the narrator, the guy telling the, the kids, the story cuts in. And he's like, but enough random praise for Orthodox Christianity. Back to Leonard infiltrating <laughs> Russian public schools. Because So the guy that we saw leaving the school originally, he was on a mission to go to Russia and to recruit potential wizard students. Yes. All right. So he thunders and lightnings his way into a classroom to talk about how God is bullshit and he can do wizard magic. No, I get it. We we had a guy come and talk to us about bullying that did improv comedy, and I, I think I would have preferred. <laughs> it's like that. The wizard magic that turns my teacher sexy. Yeah, he like he uses his magic to give the teacher far more satanic and sexy clothes. And when she immediately goes like, "Hey, um, this 
super cool magic trick. Can you change me back? I'm in the middle of a work day and you you put me into like a, a ball gown. <laughs> this, this is horribly inappropriate for the, for the workplace. <laughs> also, this is a super low level spell. You're a Nazi warlock. You're trying to impress the kids. You just gave me like a dress that's a different color. I feel like that didn't really do anything. And then a kid stands up and is like, you're a shitty wizard. That was fucking boring. Yes. I can like melt stuff and kill flowers if I want. Which, of course, proves that beauty in the world is stupid. This, like, nihilist kid is such a bummer to, to the Nazi magic guy. That's awesome. Yeah, so this is Nadia. We'll la learn later that this is Arupkin's granddaughter. And she looks like you paper mache a girl onto a skeleton. Yeah. She's fucking terrifying. This is, a, this is a doll you find in a serial killer's basement, and you just go right upstairs and shoot him in the head. <laughs> just right upstairs. No more arresting. <laughs> We're going full prisoners now. Yeah, but she explains that his magic is bullshit because it doesn't last and it's not real beauty or whatever. And she tells him that only God can make real miracles, to which he says, that's very interesting. You and I should meet in a quiet place all by ourselves after class to discuss this. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. So, OK, so then we cut back to a Ropekin's office where he and Sev are trying to decide, like, which of their cadets to send undercover to Hogwarts. Yeah. And ultimately, they settle on this kid, Ivan, and his best friend, Pyotr. And then we cut back to Leonard, the guy from the evil castle or whatever, meeting with Nadia in the hallway after class and telling her that she would make a great wizard if she would just come to his Scottish wizardry school. And it's, a, it's, it's like a bad recruitment gone wrong, right? He's like, no, trust me, you could be a really great wizard. And she's like, I don't know, are there side effects? And he's like... <sighs> I mean, our campus is in Scotland. Does that, um, <laughs> does that do anything? You could say a slur at the live show and they'll just kind of go, ooh, they'll like let you get away with it. <laughs> so that was all explained. It was, it makes sense when people have checked and verified that, yes, in the Northeast of the United States, uh huh, that's it's a thing, doing. a package store. <laughs> Slurs are a thing. Sorry, I'm just thinking of the guy whose first episode it is. He's just taking out his headphones. Okay, weird movie review Yeah, show. yeah. Uh -huh. No, no, nothing, nothing appeals to new listenership like um, inside jokes from live events from seven years About ago. About slurs. They, yeah, I say right. this all the time. Uh -huh. And Noah's always like, no, quack, quack, quack. I'm glad you're finally admitting it on air. <laughs> and also, also, Nadia's motivations in here are impossible to keep track of, right? Because originally she's like, no, only God can do magic. And he's like, well, you could do magic. And she's like, no, I can't. And he's like, yeah, all you'd have to do is love magic more than your country or your religion or your family. And she's like, oh, well, in that case, yeah, I kind of do want to do that. <laughs> oh, I don't understand. Oh, I just have to prioritize magic above my parents. Yeah, let's do this. Let's oh, do well, this in that thing. case, it should be fairly easy. So, yeah, so she renounces her family and her country super fucking quick. So fast. And he gives her a magic book to read. Mm hmm So, okay. So then we get, we're going to meet Cadet Ivan. He's going to be the main character of this school. And I have him down as Russian Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> that's very accurate. Yeah, it, it depends <laughs> on the angle. But once in a while, they hit an angle of him. And you're like, well, that's fucking, that's a Beavis puppet. That's very. He's KG Beavis. <laughs> oh, God damn. Well done. How sir. dare you? Well done. So, okay, so he comes in and Seb briefs him on the wizard school. It gives us all that same fucking exposition that they just gave him. And he explains that five Russian orphans have been recruited to the castle and Ivan has to go to the castle to rescue them. That is his mission. Keep that in mind throughout the entire story that the reason they sent him in the first place was to rescue five Russian orphans. Oh, and we should also point out, because they, they mention here that the kids, that the Russians that they're sending them to rescue don't want to be rescued. They don't want to be there. So he's sending them there, you know, to kidnap those children and forcibly deport them. Obviously, yeah. But they, they use the term rescue. They're pretty interchangeable in Russia, I guess. And they, they will constantly refer to the fact that, like, look, sometimes in Russia there are people who need to be rescued. <laughs> Maybe just over the border of a certain country. Don't worry about <laughs> it. And they will be like, no, do not rescue me. This is technically a war crime, but you are rescuing them. <laughs> Trust me. You are rescuing them. <laughs> So and, and he says, I want to bring my buddy Piotr with him. And they're like, yeah, we already kind of established him as the sidekick. And he's like, good. And then they give him a watch. And they're like, this, is, this watch will allow us to track you at all times. And if you're ever in trouble, you can just press this button three times and it sends out a distress call. 
And he's like, oh, I guess this is going to probably help me out of a real jam later on in the movie. And they're like, you'll, you'll be shocked by how little it does, actually. You'll be. You would actually be amazed. What if I told you it literally does not matter in the movie at all? <laughs> so, this is an ass watch, right? To be clear. Feels like an ass watch. Yeah, it we goes don't in see, an ass look, at some point. I'm not expecting them to put a watch on any of these animation models. No. So we can only. <laughs> Come on. Take it seriously, Heath. So, okay. So that night. We get Nadia, the, the the girl who has been recruited. She goes home and she tells Grandpa Oropkin that she wants to renounce her citizenship and become a Scottish sorcerer. And he's and, and Oropkin is like, why don't you ice skate instead? Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, no, you do figure skating now. Russians are automatically the best in the world at figure skating. Yes. Like straight from the propaganda department. Like somebody might as well walk in and be like, they sure are. Wink. Ding. <laughs> okay. Ready for the rest of the movie. Look at this collection of Olympic golds. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Our judges are reasonable, but I just, I want to know who in that writer's room was like, we have to mention the figure skate. Really? <laughs> and Dave, this has nothing to do with the fact that your niece is in the Olympics this year. No, <laughs> no. Are we propagandaing or not? It's important to me. Also, my mom make best pierogi. <laughs> so, you guys never propaganda what I want to propaganda. It's so always Hillary Clinton this, Hillary Clinton that. <laughs> and so Nadja's like, um, she's like, you know, if my parents weren't in Australia, they'd let me sell my soul to Satan to go to wizarding school. And it's like, oh, do they not have fucking phones in Australia there? <laughs> um, but yeah, but apparently we have to establish that she's not an orphan, damn it. She's got parents. They're just not around. And then the doorbell rings and she runs down the hall to get the door, but she runs like, 13 fucking miles. <laughs> Just make the hallway smaller. You you draw it. We watch them learn how to use the model. It's like, okay, we got her running. We And okay, now move her forward. Nope, that looks like she's floating, but also moving her. God <laughs> damn it. We got to make her smaller and go up. <laughs> Jesus, this is shrink, a lot of stuff. Shrink. Guys. She's tripping Fuck. on the box I drew in the middle of the hallway. Why did you draw a box in the middle of the hallway? I, it's already there. It's already there. And the mission is so hard, guys. Can we just convince all the boomers that we made a good movie? That seems way easier. <laughs> <laughs> but the knock on the door, though, is from Ivan and Pyotr, who have showed up at his house to, like, I, I guess, get the last minute details on their mission or something. She overhears them talking about that. That will also never matter to the story. There's so many. Okay. I thought this movie kept setting up for her to betray them because she like walks in on me here. Later, they'll reveal a secret to her. None of it will ever matter nope. at all to the plot. In no fucking way. Yeah. So we get a quick scene of Leonard calling his boss saying, hey, you know, I, I flew all the way to Russia, only got one student, but she's she's awesome. She's uh, she's like a major character. She'd already been established as a character. So it's a big deal. <laughs> and then we get fucking Ivan Piotr being driven to the airport for their trip to Scotland, their very roundabout eventual trip to Scotland. Yes. And there's very clearly like propaganda, like look at the beautiful Russian countryside, yes. like a farmer <laughs> with a sickle might as well like rise up and be like <laughs> plenty of food for everybody. I just wrote in my notes here. I was like, oh, I'm so grateful I get to hate my country. Yeah. I can't imagine how much it must suck to have to be like, American. The farmer just like puts down a sickle, does a triple axle figure skating move. Yes, we're good at all these things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Rupkin takes him to the airport. This is where they're going to introduce him to a different adult with a different distinct mustache. This is Victor. And he's going to be acting as the superior officer for the remainder of the film. Right. So they fly out, headed that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. We get Ivan, he's asleep on the plane, dreaming of getting a commendation from the Russian president. This is going to matter. Pay attention, everybody. Yes, right. It's a lesson of the movie. It is. It is. I was just very proud of myself for recognizing the Grand Kremlin Palace from the, from the animation. <laughs> so Ivan wakes up and they're like, hey, bad news. There's fog on the ground, so the plane can't land. We're going to have to parachute in. And I'm like, I've landed on planes when it's foggy. Like, that's definitely, they can definitely do that. You know what I never considered was parachuting instead for safety. <laughs> Much safer. Can you imagine that? You're just, <laughs> you're just on your fucking Delta or whatever. And they're like, guys, sorry, it's super foggy. The good news is. 
trust me, United will start doing that to passengers this year. No, I'll be careful. No, you're right. Here. That's the, yeah, I don't want to give them any ideas. Also, this is where I thought they were still headed to school. They're not, they're, they have a little side mission first, but I, I thought they were just going to parachute into school. Like, hello. Yep. Took the old <laughs> parachute in. I'm here to be a wizard. Yes. The wizard. <laughs> it's, it's the way they get into the school is not less dumb. That's true. So, okay, but no, but instead of Scotland, they're actually parachuting down into Serbia, which is not directly on the way from where they were coming anyway. And when we knew they were in Serbia, did anyone else have a moment where you were like, I don't really want the Russian propaganda's opinion on Serbia? (laughs) (laughs) This is like if Germany had a propaganda department, it was like, let's head over to Auschwitz. I'm like, oh. Yeah, well, and and then and and as if that's not bad enough, they're like, oh, head up that mountain. Just on the other side of that is Kosovo, and we're like, oh, god damn it! <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's like they fucking heard me. Well, if you're worried that they might like depict a war crime in Kosovo in a second, they will. They literally will. <laughs> yeah, and and apropos of fucking nothing, we'll get there. I just wrote in my notes, imagine how bored the live action cadets must be by this story right now, right? And then we went to, and the kids are like, Scotland? No, Serbia. <laughs> so, no, I went to Kosovo where I stopped war crimes. Yeah, well, I, I responded to war crimes. So, so, <laughs> okay, first to, <laughs> so to be clear, they flew from Russia to Serbia so that they could hike into Kosovo. Yes. Correct. But first they go to like a rave on a mountain in Kosovo because they want to before the mission. Well, so the mission was to get to this military, like this military base that was in this Kosovo mountain so that they could get a couple of tiny little helicopters that could fly them to Greece. Weren't they just in Russia where they're from? (laughs) They were on an airplane. (laughs) They were on a fucking airplane that could have gone all the goddamn way to Greece. I have no fucking idea. (laughs) But Noah, Noah, think... Were they in a full split with their cock and balls out? <laughs> oh, you know, you're right. You're right. That, that no. was very uncomfortable. They need to get in these incredibly silly helicopters that you must be in a full split to ride in. They're the greatest. And they're they're made out of a little box. So they like Yeah, they they're hike. IKEA <laughs> micro <laughs> helicopters. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They they hike to some secret warehouse facility that we're going to learn is where this leader guy dropped little box helicopters like a bunch of years ago. Yes. And then he has them take out the boxes and he's like, yeah, okay, build helicopters. It's um, it's four step process. Look at the You'll pictures. You'll need an from- Allen wrench. And, yes, uh, everyone. Yeah. Allen wrench. Kinski. <laughs> so, four steps to build helicopters. Yep. And, and then he's like, and they're like, wow, how did you know these helicopters were here? He's like, well, to tell you that story, I'm going to have to beep a doodly do <laughs> and go back another five years to Serbia in 1999. So back in 99, when he was serving in Kosovo, he came across a bunch of evil Serbians killing civilians, which we watched for a fucking while. Right. So again, to be clear, what this doodly do is, is how do I build these helicopters? That reminds me of the war crimes we didn't do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that the other yep. guys did. <laughs> and yeah, we're in a flashback of a doodly. Do- like I wanted the movie to keep just doodly doing back and like eventually we're in Genesis and they're like, OK. Yeah. yeah. Well, like Grand Leonardo Budapest DiCaprio Hotel. has to get a ladder and have us draw him a maze to get us out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. But once all of the civilians were all but three of the civilians were killed, Victor and his men sprung into action. They saved the hot blonde and the nun. Yeah. You guys, you guys remember the Balkan Wars and how the uh, the Russians were the heroes of all that? Yes. What we always mm-hmm. say. Yeah. That's what we always say. <laughs> so, yeah. So they heroically save a bunch of people and and find some Serbian micro helicopters that he can stash for later. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, that's pretty disturbing to have in an animated film. Do you think we could end this segment with a nun describing the horrors of war and then hard cut away and never address it again? Sure can. (laughs) So, yeah. So the nun talks about the time that all of the other nuns at the nunnery were murdered and raped. And then the nunnery was set on fire. And then we unfucking swoosh the doodly do and Victor's like, anyway, that's how we got these helicopters. <laughs> these helicopters. They never <laughs> address the nun. No. He's just, she's just like, and this screaming, I hear it whenever I sleep. 
boobly boo, boobly boo, boobly boo. <laughs> but now, but then he explains once more to these kids that they don't have to worry about the wizard because faith in God and love of country protects Russians from wizard magic. Yeah. Also, we have to do another errand before we do our spy yes. mission. <laughs> right. And he's like, oh, are we going to take these micro helicopters to Scotland? He goes, no, we're going to we're going to go to Greece from here. No. And like, really? Because that's Sorry, also what? not really directly in the. So, yeah. So, but they all get their little micro choppers and, and head to Greece. Full splits. Yes. Full, splits. Full splits. You must watch this. I feel like you go side saddle on this thing, right? That's got to hurt, especially after <laughs> yeah. a while, right? Or crisscross applesauce or something. Yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be comfortable. But then we, we back all the way out of the doodly do to the live action tent with the soldiers. And he's like, anyway, that's as much of the story as we're going to do before Noah and Heath and Eli take the first break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because what are they fucking showing this when a teacher gets sick, has a hangover in Russian school? All right, kids, I had a lot of vodka last night. Who wants to watch part two of Kids versus Wizards? <laughs> Seriously, they're tight. Like the live action people are like, all right, I don't even know how many levels doodly do we were in. It was like, ah. <laughs> see, so it was back. The war crime was I, before the whatever. Uh, time out. We're going to get a little lost there. Take a quick break for some opera poem. Nothing. Yes. Right. Did, a, did a nun describe gang rape in our children's <laughs> movie? So, Guys, think- yes, too late. We already did it. Yep. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, if this movie's taking a fucking commercial break, we could take a break, too. But we'll be back in a minute with even more Kids versus Wizards. All right, everyone, right this way. Yeah, everyone with the tour of the Wizard School, right this way. All right. Okay. So this is our main hall. As you can see, our students enjoy free broom travel throughout the school, wherever they like. Yeah, I see that. Uh, question? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, the fire breathing gargoyles. Yes. Yes. These are original. They were part of the original castle. Yes. Okay. Well, right. But they, they seem really close to the, um, to the broom riding children. Yes. Good I eye. Do. Yes. The children do sometimes catch fire, but as you can see down here in the main hall, there are also children on fire just down here in the common area. So that, that is not a concern for campus. That that's just uh, something that happens. What? Sorry. Yeah. Just no, nope, no, nope, go things. ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm just looking over the course load here. And it's uh money, evil, hate. Those are the classes. Yeah. That is the the course load for the first year. Now, if there are no more questions, we're gonna head over to the vampire dorm where the vampires are. <sighs> I mean, this is still better than public school, though. Oh yeah, big time. I'm on board. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action in the live action world while we learn how much fun it is to be at Russian paramilitary youth camp. Why is there a small child in a hockey jersey? Someone acknowledge the small <laughs> child in a hockey jersey. Jersey. Thank you. <laughs> what is he doing there? He's just there. He's got a clipboard. Is he like the push up counter? He's there to destroy me and Heath's psyche. The rest of the movie, every four scenes, I'll just be like, hey, do you guys remember when there was a tiny child in a hockey jersey and no one acknowledged it? Is he magical? So we watched like this weird fucking montage of paramilitary summer camp where we watch kids do push-ups for like a really long time. Most of the kids were not taking them particularly seriously. But then like, we watched target practice with pellet guns and knife throwing practice. Okay. In what scenario during a war against evil sorcerers, would you be in like a pectoral muscle strength contest or pellet gun shooting knife throwing? How would that help against wizards? Well, this isn't, this is not a paramilitary camp against wizards. This is for Ukraine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you are gonna need to throw some knives into the yeah, lying down you're skulls. Run of out of they do a lot of knife throwing? Is that a war thing <laughs> so, still? Yeah, sure is. When you're being supplied by the Russians, yeah. <laughs> now, now, Noah, when you say knife throwing montage, do you mean like a brief montage of a couple of students hitting the targets, or do you mean every <laughs> single person's turn at knife throwing, whether they hit or miss, including the cleanup where they go? <laughs> and remove the knives from the targets. Even worse, 
when one of the kids forgets to do it and they call him back up to take his <laughs> knives out for the next kid, that makes it in. I think the whole point of this was to embarrass the one kid that didn't manage to stick any of the knives, right? <laughs> Bosnitsky, we keep you in montage and leave you for last. Yes. <laughs> you get a giant hockey shirt. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but this wraps up with the commander guy going like, you know, there's a saying in Russia, and I don't remember what the saying was. I summarized it as even children sometimes must die in battle for the glory of the motherland. I know that's not verbatim, but it was something like that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And he goes like, also, there's pizza rolls. If you're hungry, dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Russia's propaganda department was happy about showing this is terrifying. They're right? like, yeah, we have, you know, camps for kids to learn knife throwing. Yes, we do. <laughs> and satellites. And we killed that dog. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then, OK, so then we get the title card for part two, Blessing and Valediction. And that starts out with the kids playing two-on-one Rochambeau, which, honestly, I'm surprised that we don't do regularly. Yeah, Ooh, that looks fun yeah. to be the middle one. Right, right. Well, and you're always sitting in the middle at the live show. Like, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now we know what we're doing in Seattle. Yeah. So the CO, yeah, instead of a show, we just <laughs> instead of a tournament. <laughs> we could get it going. We got, you know, people who go up to the shows, they're there to have fun. They're, yeah. They're going to enjoy it. So, okay. So the CO comes in to tell more of the story and all the kids just can't wait. They're like, Oh great. This awesome story. Just do any more nuns get raped to death in it. And he's like, man, no, no. <laughs> hey boss. Doodly do. Doodly do. <laughs> doodly do. And he's like, fuck. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. That is what was happening. Okay. <laughs> he keeps telling the movie. All right. And then we're going to get the most useless 11 minutes of the movie, right? This is where Ivan, Pyotr and Victor show up at the houses of a couple of holy men in Greece on their little microcopters. Garden gnomes. Yes, well, yeah, one of them is very clearly a garden gnome. I think the other two are half garden gnome. <laughs> yes. It feels like someone was halfway through making a model for the Trolls movie, and they were like, oh, sorry, Trolls. I, I don't know. I mean, my head, it was gnomes. It was um. <laughs> Can I sell these? Can we sell to the these? Russian yeah. Department <laughs> yeah. of Propaganda? I can. Okay, cool. This is Ursat's animation that these... <laughs> Russian animators thought. And look, the translation for this movie is just so-so, but we have one of my favorite mistakes here in this scene where the gnomes invite them to eat with them and they say, have a potluck with us. And I wanted so badly for them to have brought like a hot dish and a side on their Thighmaster helicopter. (laughs) (laughs) It's another great moment of awesome translation is when one of the holy men says to Victor, yes, nothing is more important than the importance of the mission. (laughs) (laughs) Definitionally. Really? And so they all sit down to eat, and one of the garden gnomes tells them about St. Dimitri, who fought and was brave and then was ultimately killed by the people he was trying to save, because this cartoon has to just throw in martyrdom now and again. I love the Eastern Orthodox religion, because, you know, Catholicism, it's all been westernized. Oh, don't you know, St. Peter went among the children, and each bunny rabbit had a tiny mushroom that loved its mother. And the Eastern Orthodox (laughs) saints are just like, this is St. Kyotonich. He killed and lose his skin. (laughs) Oh, were you done? (laughs) This is why we no eat on Thursday. We're done. That was the story? That is it, the story. He lost his skin, and what do we do? He'd die. We know eat. Okay. So, <laughs> that's always their solution, isn't it? Put a picture of this on your child's bed, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be clear, though, this is like the patriarch guy, and he's yeah. giving them like the blessing on the mission, and he's giving him the story of this Saint Dimitri, and he's like, yeah, heroic guy. Well, he died, but he, he stayed Christian while he died, so good luck. Yep. And that, that's the moral of the story. Yeah, because Ivan's like, oh, I'll be brave. And they're like, it's not about being brave. It's about being my religion. Now let's pray. (laughs) So they pray and there's this amazing animation. There's this bird on the window. So when they start to pray and he flies up and I'm like, is he he carrying the prayer to heaven? He's not. But the animation of this bird is just so bizarre. And it's not necessary, right? Like we don't need a bird to fly around for the story to make sense or whatever. So you'd think when they saw how poorly they did bird, they'd just be like, hey, you know what? No birds. Just no birds in this universe. He's telling this big story and he's like, yeah, it's about truth and faith and Jesus. And Sorry, I'm I'm just waiting for the dove to fly away. It'll be a second. Flap! (laughs) Still going. Flap! He's saying flap. Flap! Are you saying flap? And this is an amazing, terrible cut here because they're all like, they're about to eat and he's like, you know, let me say a prayer. And we watch the dove fly away. And we're supposed to cut back to the table after dinner. 
But like, there's not food on the table or anything because they were going to animate all of that. So it just seems like all of this is part of the the prayer before dinner and these guys are starving. Yes, it <laughs> all seems like it's part of grace. Because <laughs> yeah. he's like reading from the Bible when they come back and I'm like, oh, Jesus, did he did he read the Gospels to him? Yeah. Okay, but then can we talk about a wild boar tried to seduce me, guys? Yes, thank <laughs> well, you. Well, obviously, obviously. This- so we're, again, we're in the middle of this like very important story that's supposed to be the moral of the whatever for the people doing the spy mission. And then this old patriarch guy is like, a boar did a sexy lady voice and tried to fuck me. And they're like, sorry, what? End of scene. Are you maybe just a crazy person? And the guy's like, no, I literally had to fuck a boar because of Satan. This happened. Use that as a, a lesson. Or something. So yeah, so let me back up a bit here because they like there's no exaggeration here. No. They're just like, you know, but the evil one will always try to get you. Isn't that right, Donakoff? And and Donakoff is like, Yes, well, sometimes when I was out in the wild, the wild boars would speak to me in women's voices. And everyone just stops and they stare right at him. And Pyotr's like, Are you sure you weren't just just imagining it or something? Yes. And the guy's like, no, I wasn't. The boys were trying to seduce me. <laughs> the, an- <laughs> the animated characters in this movie are like, I am what? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're going to go back to our children's movie now. It's weird that you gave us that excuse before there was an accusation. <laughs> Can I say, I feel like the guy thought everyone was going to be like, oh, yeah, me too. But no one did. So he just had to fucking double down hard. He was like, oh, nobody else? I mean, it's symbolic. Well, it happened. Symbolic. Just so you know, it happened. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> That's this old guy. He's the sage voice of wisdom in the movie. He's the Yoda yes. of this movie. And he's like, I fucked a boar. Little <laughs> voice. Dude. You talk about your Star Wars remakes that would win me back to the franchise. <laughs> if Yoda was just like, you see that mushroom out there? Seduce me, it did. <laughs> so, so then we, we check back in on a Rupkin who's checking in on Ivan and Pyotr. And he's like, you know, I, yeah, I agree. It's way too late in the movie for them not to yet have arrived at Hogwarts. <laughs> but just then a subordinate comes in. And he's like, sir, your granddaughter is missing and we have no idea where she is. It's like, yeah, that's what missing means. I love that he had to tell his boss like, yeah, no, the, it's the mission's about to happen. They had to pick up tiny helicopters in boxes and then uh, talk to the boar fucking guy. But they, yeah, right after that, they're going to the thing. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> and his boss is like, yeah, okay, that'll try. Okay. Cool. As long as we're going to get to the plot of the movie eventually. Well, actually, it doesn't have to we're be in the first check, half yeah. of the film or anything. Yeah, so, so then we cut back to Greece. The pig fucker and the garden gnomes are telling them that a spiritual war is afoot in Russia. This is where they introduce the fact that they know that the Antichrist will be Slavic, you know, based on the accents from American movies, but that's all they know about him. Yeah. And, and there's also a, a moment right there where, like, just very abruptly, we cut back to the live action just so one of the kids could say, so what happens next? And then we just move on to the next scene. This happens several times. Just do your movie. Right. <laughs> I know what happens next if you do it next. I don't understand why they keep checking back in. Well, and we have to, like, this is not done in, like, a charming, you know, fourth wall breaking way, like in The Princess Bride, where, like, there's also a story in the real world that's being presented to us. It's just random as fuck. It's like, so I we couldn't actually uh, finish animating that scene with our budget. So tell us about the next one. <laughs> Went now. More movie. Go. Mm-hmm. Three, two, one, go. More movie. Yeah. So the garden gnomes tells him about this time where he met a telekinetic named Shushu Run that couldn't use his telekinesis if the garden gnome said Jesus prayers. Okay. Right. Now, maybe this is just me dealing with my PTSD from him talking about that boar that seduced him with a woman's voice. But do the other animated characters seem like they're kind of only half listening to this guy now? Because I was watching this and I don't know if you've ever seen like when someone establishes themselves as crazy and you just sort of like do the nod thing and try to walk away. That's how the characters interact. It's like, oh, yeah, no, sure. It was the same lady as the lady boar voices. Yeah. Oh, it's getting late. It's getting late. <laughs> so well, this is my stop. Bro, yeah. We're not on a train. <laughs> So, yeah, and, and so Ivan's like, yeah, I want to learn how to resist wizard magic as well. 
And one of the garden gnomes is like, oh, well, for that, you'll have to sleep in the hermit cell tonight to practice your magic resistance. It's the tree in Dagobah. It's just it is. Yeah, it's the tree. It's the tree. Uh, and and Yoda was seduced by a mushroom. Okay, they have a a demon cave where they put hermits. Yes. It, that that already they have a dedicated thing for that. <laughs> Eastern teach this guy Orthodoxy. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking to myself, man, they've been dying for a chance to use this thing for a while. They're really <laughs> excited about this moment. I think they're running in there, cleaning up all the dirty bags. No, no, it's ready. It's ready. <laughs> just in, didn't expect the hermits. Hermits don't tend to visit a lot, you know. It's kind of in the name. We tell them eleven a.m. checkout, and the hermits they stay past and they leave stuff. It's crazy. So he goes into the the hermit cell, this little cave, to spend the night. There are a lot of monster eyes in the cell with him. This is the best because the animators don't understand that red eyes in cartoons belong to creatures. So they're just like, what is scary? (laughs) Red eyes. Okay. There are lots of red eyes in this empty building. Just floating around in this small room. A smoke snake comes up to him and he goes, abjure your faith. And I had to look up what the fuck abjure meant. I did too. I, I, feel was- like, I feel like you just abjure it at that point, right? Like, okay. Yeah, right. Cool. And now, and now I'm friends with the, the smoke snake, right? <laughs> See, I really wanted him to have like a really bad pedant argument with the snake about the meaning of abjure. It's like, well, actually, technically only Catholics can abjure. That's like a, no, abjure <laughs> has a, a generalized no, meaning it too. General right, but it is. comes from the Catholic root. <laughs> Lots of things come you from You can use roots. non-rooted words with a stupid, just abjure your face. Give it it's up. It's not cultural <laughs> appropriation. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> So, yeah, so he falls asleep on his rock. Apparently, you have to sleep on a rock. And he dreams that he's at this market and everybody's trying to sell. Like, one guy's trying to sell him great music and the other guy's trying to sell him great books. But instead, he asks this guy about a really cool sword. And I get it. I'm a a fucking dork. I get it. Yeah, he has a dream about, I think, a racist level of Zelda that I hadn't played before. Like, I'm not even sure what racism was happening, but something was happening that was racist here, right? Yeah, there's a special special kind of... The sword selling guys? Russian brand of racism we're not tuned into. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's like, yeah, I want that sword so that I can be a great conqueror. And I'm like, guys, I don't know if that's supposed to be like his personality flaw or if the Russian propaganda ministry is selling that real heroes want to be conquerors. I genuinely don't know. I also genuinely didn't know. It's the former. It is the former. But we had to we had to wait a while to figure that out. Really wanted the guy at the next stall to have a rocket launcher to be like, you sure you don't want this? I feel like this might be more important if you know what I mean. If you're going to conquer. Yeah. <laughs> But then as he's sleeping, the garden gnome and the pig fucker come in and they're like, ah, we found his spiritual weakness. It's the fact that he's vain and he wants for personal glory. He's asleep this whole time. So they're just talking about this amongst themselves. I feel like they should have done that in the cave in Dagobah. Like Yoda should have come in and been like, hmm, a real piece of shit he is. (laughs) (laughs) I want him to wake up and be like, you fucked pigs. Didn't you just tell us that? What are you? (laughs) My weakness is my vanity. You fucked up. You made up a whole crazy lie to fuck a pig. And then you tried to tell us another crazy story so you wouldn't be the pig fucking guy, but you're still the pig fucker. Super judgy pig fucker. (laughs) So, So the next day, they all gather to say their goodbyes. So literally nothing happened while they were in Greece, except that we heard the pig fucking story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, thanks. Thanks for all the great... um, Whatever the fuck this was, I uh, feel like it <laughs> could have been an email or whatever. As though the pig fucker realized this at the last minute, he's like, oh, we should probably give you an object or something. Here is a weird six-armed cross. Uh, this, I'm sure, will be very important. It's later. so stupid how they use it. It, <laughs> it comes back, but in the dumbest, most useless way possible. Here's a cross, and remember, if anyone asks you about me, I'm the guy who gave you the cross. That's the thing you remember about me the most. <laughs> is, is I'm, I'm good old cross-giving Larry. Just remember yep. the so, cross-giver. That's what I do. Pig fucker cross-giving Larry. Got God it. damn it. <laughs> I'm just going to say pig fucker. <laughs> so now we cut to them arriving at Har- Hogwarts. They're in Scotland now, and they have to sneak in. So they decide to like sneak into the back of this truck that's headed into Hogwarts. Now, luckily... Among the things they're delivering are a bunch of empty man-sized boxes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very helpful. They get in there and they're like, yeah, oh no, perfectly. They, 
I guess they're getting a delivery of large empty boxes. And also one that's marked, it says Scorpion Bus on it. And uh, Piotr's like, I'm going to get into the Scorpion Bus. I'm going to do Scorpion Bus. That seems like a good one for me. (laughs) There were empty ones that you could see that are open and they don't say Scorpion or anything related to that. And you got into the Scorpion Bus. Scorpion Bus. Really? You're already inside. Okay. So then we get the title card for part three. H-A-W-M, Haum, that's the High Association for Wizard Magic or whatever the fuck it is. I don't, I don't remember. Can I, uh, I was pronouncing it Wham, and can I, can I highly recommend walking around your home just going Wham, Wham. That's not how that would be. I, I do that already. Okay. All right. <laughs> Nobody really says anything. Then the live action, well, yeah, right, because it's just you. So, so the live action kids ease us in back into the movie by asking if the next scene happens. It does. So we cut to the warehouse where they've loaded all of these boxes. Ivan gets out of his box. Now he's got to go rescue Piotr from his box, but along the way, he's going to do some hand over hand that would like the load runner guy would give him the side eye. Like, come on. We've got, we've got better animation than this. He moves like he's at the edge of a side scroller that won't let him go sometimes. (laughs) Yeah. You know, so he's, he's still walking, but not moving. Yes. And then it lets him go a little bit. It's so bad. And so he finds Piotr in the scorpion box, but there's another box loaded on top. So he can't get him out. You know, what is he going to do? Cut through the side of cardboard? Give me a fucking break. So he has to go find a forklift. First, he checks the roof to see if there's one there. there <laughs> let's uh, let's see if they have a forklift on this glass dome. Just uh, precariously. Per- yeah, no. And then he falls through the glass roof. He smashes through the roof falls an entire floor down and is like, hello, yeah, I'm here for class. Well, and my favorite <laughs> thing about the animation, right, because he like he looks over the edge of this balcony, he's like, oh, there's no way down from here, and he's supposed to fall because he looked too far, but the animation is so bad that it's like, it looks like he got depressed that there were no forklifts on the roof and then took his own <laughs> <Yeah>. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they, so he falls through this, um, this skylight and he's just in the middle of a big gathering of students and he's like uh where is um orientation this is where i parked my car <laughs> what so admissions, I'm looking for is there an admission office meeting room b do you take the common application i have one ready and the best part is he introduces himself <laughs> in the worst possible way because he introduces himself with the name of a character who we already know is a bad guy, right? It's like if Harry had crashed through the Hogwarts ceiling and been like, my name? Voldemort. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's not the name. <laughs> yeah, but he explains that he's Shushu Run from Siberia and he got there because he used magic to teleport, but he got the coordinates wrong and, and just ended up on top of the skylight, apparently. So we, we cut to like the headmistress's office while they're checking out that story. There's a <laughs> a clown surfer dude. Uh, yeah, Juggalo Lionel from Thundercats <laughs> is there. Really <laughs> half assing it on that last guy. And the professors are like, so you really think he teleported from Siberia into the area of sky right above our glass dome, above our secret lair? And Juggalo Lionel is like, yeah, that all checks out. I've heard of Siberian uh, teleporters before that do that. Yeah. He, he specifically says science has is aware of a number of Siberian teleporters. Siberian apparition. Read a book, assholes. And they're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and they're like, no, but seriously, we don't know a spell that would allow you to do that. How did you do that? And he goes, ah, I'm the student. You're the teacher. I'll ask the questions around here. And they're like, Fuck, he got us on a technicality. Uh, he Jason borned us. That does make sense. <laughs> he right. is rubber and we are glue. Damn it. And then they're like, oh, all right. Well, if you're so good at that, why don't you conjure up another Siberian using your magic? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. I'll just need some magic supplies from your warehouse. Um, do you have any scorpion bus? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm so curious what that means. Yeah. Is it right. a bus of scorpions? Or is it like like omnibus and scorpions as a portmanteau, which I s- still don't know what that means. I think it's Russian and it means like dried scorpions because they refer to it later as that. It's scorpionibus oh. or something like so. so maybe, maybe it means the carcass or something. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, so they bring him to the warehouse and he's like, yeah, get that. Somebody get that box of uh, scorpion buses down for me. And he just goes, <laughs> you know, 
abracadabra, make a person here instead of scorpion buses. And then he opens the box and Piotr's there and they're like, well, that is legit. I can't think of any way that they could otherwise have a human in a box. <laughs> it's weird to ask <laughs> propagandists to write whimsy, right? <laughs> So. It's weird to ask that of this ministry of propaganda distribution to be like, and make sure there's lots of jokes in this Shrek you write about <laughs> Jesus. Yes. All right. So the chapter titles are coming fast and furious. Now it's been six minutes since the last one. Now we get part four. The study begins again. The militarized summer camp leads us in with a prompt, right? Does the movie keep going? Yes. And it's yes. so fast. And then they just <laughs> go back to it. <laughs> so, yeah, so Ivan and Piotr have infiltrated Hogwarts. The headmistress is explaining all the various houses <laughs> yes. that, they, that they can go in. I want it there so bad to be like a, a fucking sorting Ushanka or something. <laughs> it gets so buck wild. Of all the things they don't understand about Harry Potter and like things that kids like about witches, the houses are the most insane. She's like, yes, there are eight houses now. Nope. Eight? 13 houses. Sorry, 13. <laughs> we are three and one quarters times better than Harry Potter. <laughs> I, lo I love the insane <laughs> argument that happened in this universe that they didn't have to put in there. No. But this lady's like, yeah, no, we had four at the beginning, but uh, everybody argued about like wood, fire, air, water, not clear, plasma, uh, scorpion bus. It wasn't clear. <laughs> we're now we have, we have 13. We have 13. We have 13. You'd like me to name some? Oh, I can absolutely name some houses for you. There is Birdhouse. That's the first one. <laughs> the doctor from TV. Yep. The second one is Reverend Ron's house. <laughs> Vampire Club. And now, so, and then we're going to check in on their first class. This is the class on avarice and affluence, right? <laughs> And can I just say, like, look, I know there's been a lot of stuff about the Harry Potter game, but I think it's really not cool that they stole the character models for the goblins for this character of the professor. Like, people <laughs> worked really on hard on this. Exactly stole. The professor who teaches greed. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Let's just say if they ever do a live version of Kids versus Wizards, eh, I'm auditioning for Professor Greed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so he explains that if you want to get rich, you have to want to be rich super bad. And I'm like, I feel like there's there's more to it than that. And then we come across, I think, a language barrier, unless you guys understood what the fuck was going on oh. with this barmaclot scene. What? Barmaclot? Sell me the word barmaclot. <laughs> you have, you're not familiar with barmaclot, Noah? Uh, Google thinks it's a bar in Tbilisi. Sell me that. Okay. Well, just, just check out <laughs> barmaclot.com and it'll tell you all about it. Oh, right, right. So, yeah, so the professor's like, now, as a test, I'm going to see which of you can make more money on the word barmaclot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sell me this pen of barmaclot. Yeah, right. the most money now. <laughs> and so, and, so, like, Dork One is like, oh, I have an idea. We could we could park the website barmaclot.com and then maybe a rock band card called barmaclot would want it. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, Eli. All right. <laughs> Seriously, in my notes, I was like, Eli already has this. You're not getting barmaclot.com. There's no way Eli has literally not already registered this. Barmaclot.com. <laughs> so I literally, I sat there, I paused the movie and I was like, shit. Nobody went to Shazam. <laughs> Dot rocks, and I spent like three and a half hours making Shazam dot rocks. I do really want to make barmaclot dot com. <laughs> no, we gotta keep doing movies that have a website in it just to make Eli keep stacking until them eventually, up. just I'm like bankrupted. Yeah, until we break him. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, problem is I keep learning new tricks. My HTML keeps getting better, and so I'm like, ooh, look, we watched Go Daddy the movie. <laughs> so, I've already watched that movie. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a whole tab dedicated to it yeah mm -hmm. so but then ultimately ivan wins this test by auctioning the word off i have no idea what's supposed to be happening here i i, I honestly i feel like without knowing russian there was no way to to fucking parse this scene yeah essentially what's i think is supposed to happen is the teacher's like okay whoever sells bar McClot, the word for the most money gets 10 points for their house. So he turns yeah. around and he's like, hey, whoever gives me the most money 
I'll give you five points of the 10 points I'm owed. And everyone's like, $80 billion. And he's like, well. Oh, it's the, yeah. Yeah. This Belichick kid is like killing it. I, I loved that <laughs> right away he had a good strategy for this. Well, they, they counted on everybody having 80 billion spare dollars. But yeah, it worked out well for him. So then we cut to Arupkin in his car learning that Nadia had gone to Hogwarts. And I'm like, a fucking course she did. The last time you saw her before she disappeared was... Her saying like, hey, I really want to go to Hogwarts in Scotland and I'm going to go whether you like it or not. Yep. Fucking duh. It's the only other place in the movie. <laughs> also. <laughs> well, there's the, yeah, where, where, where there's no boar fuckers anyway. Yeah. So meanwhile, Ivan and Piotr are, are wandering to class, wishing that they had brought more than one outfit each for this thing. And they see Nadia and they wave her over it. Now, of course, we're all thinking, oh, shit, because Nadia saw them meeting with her grandpa beforehand she knows who they are and could betray her they, they'll probably want to avoid her but no they wave her over and say hey we're undercover with the russian government don't tell anybody okay <laughs> big swear big swear and i know what you're thinking wow what a foolish thing for them to do this will obviously be their downfall nope don't worry nope. about it <laughs> nope so and they ask her like hey you haven't seen any fucking russian orphans around here since you've been here have you and she starts explaining to us that, like, most of those Russian orphans are beyond saving. That's going to be a big theme, that those guys have been too westernized now and can no longer be reintegrated into Russian society. She she really first introduces that concept here. Nice. And then we back out of the animation so that the kids watching along can start poking holes in their own stupid fucking story. <laughs> yeah, one of the kids in live action world is like, uh, hold on. Sorry, I have to grind this to a screeching halt. How did that girl even get to Scotland? Did right. she go through Kosovo <laughs> and Serbia and Greece? Or what? <laughs> and, the, and the fucking narrator's like, uh, ma magic? She's she magic. <laughs> hypnotized <laughs> what? everyone. I'm sorry, yes. teacher. Did you say she hypnotized everyone to yep, get from Russia to... Yep, that is... Her magic. Those are the words I said. And then there's an amazing moment where a kid two's like, wow, that's pretty cool. I wish I was a wizard and could hypnotize people into getting whatever I wanted. And kid three says, no, no, you don't. Because when you pirate a movie, you're really taking money from the key grip and the lighting <laughs> technicians. <laughs> <laughs> and so stupid. All right. So then we check in on probably my favorite character of the film which is a fucking hard title to get in a movie with a boar fucker in it, right? My favorite, this is the professor of seduction who is a purple walrus with enormous polygonal boobs. This is where the movie was like, you, this was the last test of our psyches. Whatever we were <laughs> before Professor Purple Walrus with giant asymmetrical tits, we are not that after <laughs> this scene. And what I, look, we're going to describe this scene. This is our job. We're here for you, podcast listener. But what I need you to know is that this scene has absolutely no effect on the nope. rest of the movie. Nope, like most of the scenes, but yeah. I feel like some guy was animating a purple walrus with tits and his boss walked over before he could click away. And he was like, <laughs> what does that mean? He was like, it is for <laughs> the movie. So, all right, that actually makes a lot of sense. So yeah, so but she is the professor of seduction and she's got all the girls in class there so she can tell them about how awesome the whore of Babylon was. Yep. She was apparently the proto-sorceress of Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. She explains that it's not really, there's not really a patriarchy where the women just make it look like that but secretly, they're controlling everything with their demonic vaginas. That's right. And then there's this great moment where she's like, okay, so who does everybody want to pattern their life after? And girl one is like, a Barbie doll. And she's like, good answer. And Nadia, they get to Nadia and she's like, I want to pattern my life after Empress Alexandra because she was faithful and loved her husband and she was demure. And the walrus is like, bad answer. You're stupid. That's a stupid answer. And you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking Russian? I bet you're Russian. Yeah. 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 This is again where she's she says, and this will be a theme. She's like, your Russianness is preventing you from learning magic. Yeah. Right. You suck at magic because you have so much love for your country and for Jesus, and you can't do it that way. So okay. So Ivan and Pyotr get back to their house. They find out they won some fucking points for the house cup or whatever. It's written on their door. Yes, There's uh huh. 
These, this is like Harry Potter's seventh part removed. It's like, what would they do with points? They probably put it on little piece of tape and then put it on door. I don't know. So, okay. So Ivan wanders off. He's like, I have to go find Nadia. Maybe she's in this random fucking field that I'm going to lay down in. Okay. Honestly, though, how worth it is just to watch this model, quote unquote, lay down. <laughs> this is a process. He does a standing back bend into the grass and his knees <laughs> pop off and, and clip through each other. And he's like, ah, it's so relaxation. <laughs> so it's like someone did an egg drop with a marionette and he's like, yep, down. lying down. <laughs> and then some random chick happens by and he goes, hey, how you doing? And she's like, I'm plot relevant. You? He goes, oh, that's convenient. She says, yeah, I'm one of the five Russian orphans. Let me exposit all the stuff we didn't bother to explain in the last like 50 minutes of the movie while we randomly wandered around and assembled helicopters and talked to pig fuckers. Right. But he immediately tells her his real name and that he's undercover with the Russian government again and that he's there to save her. And she's like, okay, well, you can save me, but all the other people are beyond saving. They're too westernized and they can't be reintegrated into Russian society. Right. And he's like, well, I'll see about that. And they are, by the way. He will ultimately find that they are. Mm -hmm. This is also where they introduce the polygon. He's, she's like, you know, so far I've managed to stay out of the polygon. And I'm like, oh, you mean the walrus lady's boobs? Or, uh, <laughs> But no, that's the prison where they keep unkillable Russians who are still immune to their magic powers. Yeah, don't worry. It will be very disappointing. Yeah, uh -huh. that it will be. This is a Russian propaganda movie. Just one more time. The Russian government, their official stance is that Russian people are magic proof. That's that's what, what they want us to know. If if they're sufficiently patriotic. Yes, yeah, it's based obviously. on their patriotism. You gotta be, you gotta be <laughs> patriotic, but yeah, obviously. So, and she's like, oh, and by the way, just in case it's 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 important later in the movie, the professor of greed from earlier, the schmer, schmer guy. The funny one from New York. Yeah, he likes <laughs> bonsai trees a lot. And he's like, oh, I bet, I bet that's going to matter. She's like, why would you think, given what you know of this movie at this point, why would you think that it would matter? Also, the way she describes bonsai trees is, it, it's like a roast. It's the most despair. She's like, they're little deformed trees that smell stupid and can't get an erection. <laughs> Can you imagine a tree brilled for its tininess? This is Western foolishness. <laughs> yeah, right, you know, the right. trees that control the banking system. The, those trees. <laughs> I feel like ice skating guy also has a thing against bonsai trees. He was okay. like, we need to mention how good we are at skating. And I want it said once and for all that bonsai trees are tiny and weird. They freak me out. I just want someone to mention it. <laughs> also, the 1980 uh, hockey Olympics never happened. That was not a thing that happened <laughs> in the universe. Cheated. Nope, it's not, not at all. Cheated. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie has resorted to random characters just showing up in fields to exposit at the main character. So I feel like it needs a minute to collect itself. We're going to give that to it. But first, I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell. Will any character manage to blink at any point? Will my nightmares forever be rendered in this movie's art style now? Why the fuck did they include that line about the pig trying to seduce the Greek dude? It makes no sense. Find out the answers to some damn thing, I guess, when we return for the arduous conclusion of Kids versus Wizards. And remember, Timmy, as long as you believe in our Jesus, the sorcerers can do you no harm. Thank you, Padre. Now, let the fast of Orthocolcus begin. Uh, sorry, what? Uh, yes, we fast for 70 days and 70 nights for Orthocolcus's return to Crete. Oh, um, cool. I, I hadn't heard of that. Ah, no, it is a tradition of the Eastern Orthodox long kept but held back by the devil himself. Devil, obviously, yes. Now change into your sackcloth and prepare yourself for a good scourge. You are merely an acolyte. A scourge? Okay, sorry, Padre. Um, is there any chance that there is a practice of the Eastern Orthodox Church that's a little bit more um, modern? Oh, you mean like, uh, like wiping with your other hand? I do not mean that. No, no. Well, then I, I have nothing for you. This is a weird cult that exists. And we have nukes. Don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to reopen with the title card for part five, Soul Release Lesson, Mm -hmm. which will open with Ivan and Piotr stopping on the way to class to assure us that the plot is still happening. They're going to try to (laughs) try to get things sorted out by the end of that night. Mm -hmm. This is also where we learn that the Hogwarts school has both video cameras and roaming guards in military uniform with machine guns. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And we're about to meet Professor McNagini, who teaches practical broom flying. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, they also have impractical broom flying. <laughs> well, they have postmodern broom flying. Maybe. Where, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. But before we get to that, though, so we have this scene where they're, Ivan and Pewter are in the hallway, and Ivan is talking to no one, but he's like pointing out the other Russian orphans. <laughs> and I only highlight this because this is like the third time in the movie where somebody like derogatorily refers to someone else as Russian speaking. Yes. I Googled it, by the way. Oh, yeah. It's like a uh, rhino, like Rilo. Yeah, yeah, it's, like, yes, yeah, it's like Russian exactly. in language only. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like a big thing. Right. It's it's very clearly meant as a slur. But yeah, so but then we go on to broom riding class. The teacher explains to us that the key here is that souls are super duper heavy and they prevent people from flying around. So you have to get rid of your soul and then you can fly on brooms. Right. And and you can get rid of your soul by specifically hating Russia and God. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And she demonstrates. She's like, watch, 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 watch. So I'll just be like, God is dead. God is dead. Ukrainians should be exterminated. I'm flying. I'm flying now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, and I will tell you, if souls were real and Christians were right about them, I'd give mine up if that meant I could fly. So, like, that's good. <laughs> they, they Like, that's the one time that they... Really nailed it. If giving away your soul gets you anything ever that's even remotely positive, yeah, best deal. Sure. Great. (laughs) But to fly, though, she explains, you have to be free from compassion, affection, a sense of duty, and love. You you have to have none of those things. And Nadia's like, I don't get it. How do I empty out my soul? And she says, okay, first, hate your mother country. Go. (laughs) Check. Yeah, no, she even signs an essay for a broom flying class called why I hate my motherland. <laughs> yes, I, I wrote it as a joke. I wrote everyone write an essay about why I hate Russia. And then I wrote, oh my God, I was joking. That's literally what's in the movie. <laughs> this yeah. movie, please allow me to exaggerate for once. Yeah, this is actually kind of a cool revelation. The way to learn flying is mostly McCarthyism. And I was like, okay, yeah, movie. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. And then she's like, oh, I, I know that might be tricky for all of you, but we have a special guest. Um, He hates Russia. <laughs> He's going to show you how it's done. Yes. No. So, okay. And and this is, I think, really where you recognize why they needed distinctive mustaches for all the adults, because I could not tell that this was not Pyotr, right? This was a different character. This is supposed to be one of the Russian orphans. But she's like, yeah, we have a special guest who's an expert in hating Russia. He's not Pyotr. He looks exactly like him in every possible way, but he's a different guy. What if we make like a juggalo line? Oh, shit. We already used that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> how many different looks are there? Did this kid have a mustache? It can't have a mustache. Right? Did we do a purple hippo with tits? So <laughs> Did a purple hippo with tits. All right. All right. Well, in that case. So, yeah. So he comes up and he's like, Russia is a stupid country for stupid people. And I hate it. But Nadia isn't having all this. She stands up to defend Russia against all this Russia bashing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This random girl from Russia is clearly a spy. Why isn't Hogwarts like you're a Russian spy? Just we, we kick you out now. Well, but that's the stupid thing about the movie is that she's not a spy. She's the one that isn't a fucking spy. And she agreed with Leonard to go learn magic, knowing that the first prerequisite was hating Russia. Yep. He did tell her about that. I remember. Yeah. So but Nadia loves her country and her mommy. She mentions that. This is Maria Butina's origin story, and it's pretty <laughs> fucking cool. <laughs> so. Just just flying around that pancake breakfast on a broom. <laughs> <laughs> but so and the teacher at this point tells the guest, the, the other Russian hating orphan kid, she's like, seize her. But they're not good enough at animating to have one character grab hold of another character. So his, his hands are just sort of like 
floating around and through her body for the rest of this. Yeah, it's literally like watching someone try to make two marionettes fight. <laughs> clack and clack. Seize him. Well, be proximate to him. There you go. Get yeah. close, but don't clip through him. <laughs> you clip through. And so, but so Piotr, he's he's heard enough too. He's in this class as well. So he gets up and he broom foos all the motherfuckers who are talking shit about his homeland. Yeah. And then Nadia and Piotr run off. I like that the brooms are also for like joust dueling. Like it's very clearly right. like a, a weapon for that. But yeah. <laughs> the animators, they made them like broom ball sticks, not brooms. Like they didn't have bristle money in the animation <laughs> budget. <laughs> right, right. Did uh, not know. That's tough. So yeah, so they run off heroically. They get nine steps in and there's like eight guards with machine guns. And they're like, well, shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> they get caught. It was a weird thing to have at a wizard school. Damn. So then we cut to the two of them in their little jail beds and Nadja's like, hey, for what it's worth, I thought it was kind of kind of hot when you started smacking people around with that broom. And Piotr's like, yeah, yeah, no, I know it was pretty cool. But now we're in jail. And for no fucking reason, a character we have never met before and will never meet again clips through the wall and is like, it's not a jail. It's for correction. It's a correct. Yeah, it's not yeah. a prison. It's a correctional facility. It's not a doll. It's an action figure. Anyway, I have <laughs> nothing else to do with this movie. It's just bad pedantry. I feel like Russia like accidentally just started apologizing for a hate crime because they're the Ministry of Propaganda. <laughs> they were like, I, I, "No, it's not a jail." Oh, oh no, that was us. Oh, okay, oh, yeah, no, oh, it, right. is, it is allowed to be a jail. Sorry, just <laughs> old reflex. You know, oh, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those babies were born with bullets in their skulls. Like it's just oh, it's old hast. <laughs> so triple lutz. <laughs> and and then and then we bumble our way into part six, the advent day of the great master. We're reminded real quick that this is this kids are being told this story by their commanding officer and they're fucking loving it, really enjoying it. <laughs> it's doing really good so far. And they're like, so so did Ivan figure out they were in prison? He's like, yeah. And Ivan came up with a plan. And then we go back into the cartoon. Now his plan starts with going to Professor Funny Guy from New York and saying that he wants extra credit in greed class. Then they make some Russian homonym jokes about bonsai trees, which really didn't really didn't land with the American audiences. This is the craziest sequence. He's like, could I buy this bonsai tree? Yes. Everything is for sale. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And then he drops the bonsai tree, but it turns out that in that pot hidden beneath the bonsai tree was a priceless Fabergé egg stolen from the Nazis during World War II. Hey, Noah. <laughs> yes, what the Eli. fuck is happening? In this <laughs> I movie? don't know, man. Like, I know what you just said is true, but why? Yeah, that all happened. I feel like this was another propaganda moment where they're like, also, by the way, Fabergé eggs, peak of art in human history. Yes, they are. Wink, ding. Okay, back to the movie. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. Well, and and let's not lose track of the fact that this was his plan, right? This whole scene started with like, but Ivan came up with his plan. His plan was to break open a bonsai tree's pot and hope there was a Fabergé egg in it that he could take <laughs> hostage. <laughs> Shit. Just dirt. Wait, yeah, exactly. I'll shoot this dirt right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> So he's like, I'll destroy this egg unless you take me to the polygon so I can save my friends. And he's like, I guess that's the plot now. Sure. Fuck. Why not? So meanwhile, we cut to this is <laughs> we're going to find out later. NATO headquarters. Sure is. Where they're where they're conspiring with the headmaster of Hogwarts to make sure the Russians can't sneak in and get their orphans out. Oh, yeah. This is Shmato for sure. Yeah. They have a big N. It's not. They call it NATO later. <laughs> oh, do they actually call it NATO? Yes, okay, yes. nice. Because mm -hmm. they have a big N to be like, yeah, it's probably NATO. And <laughs> two identical world maps on either side of the the war room to like That's weird. double check world stuff. Where, where, whichever way you're facing, you know where Africa is in relation to Asia <laughs> <laughs> in this room. So Ivan gets to the polygon, I guess. He finds Nadia, but Pyotr's missing, as is Asya. Now, Asya is the girl that showed up in the field earlier, the only one of the orphans that they have deemed redeemable. Yep. Okay. Sorry. I just want to mention the depiction of American military guy at Schmedo. 
Oh, nice. He's uh -huh. fucking per. It's just all chin. His entire face is a chin. Yep. Just a jawline. And otherwise, he's Guile from Street Fighter 2. Exactly. He totally guile. is. Yeah, exactly. With a, with a, with a little, little trimmed a little closer. But other than that, yeah. So Nadja, Ivan, and the Professor Chu are in the prison when suddenly a person fish Muppet in a sweater vest shows up. This is Arkady. Arkady is another one of the Russian orphans that is the one of the irredeemable ones. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, did they find this model somewhere? It was like, oh, oh, guys, it was in the backgrounds folder. I found a new model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and they're like, hey, Arkady, would you like to come back to Russia? We're going to we're, we're saving Russian orphans. And he's like, yeah, totally not going to betray you. You sure are pretty fucking awesome, though. You person whose weakness was established earlier to be his vanity and they're like he's like yeah i am pretty awesome sorry did you just say you're not gonna betray us did you just say that <laughs> outright <laughs> i sure did okay and then professor greed is like aha he's being vain and prideful now my magic will work on him hanukkah <laughs> yeah yeah he says the magic <laughs> words and turns ivan to stone but when he does, Nadia grabs a hold of the egg and she's like, okay, well, now I'm going to break your fucking egg unless you help us. And he's, he's like, right, fuck. Ah, shit. Technicality. Hey, any chance you're full of pride? Did I mention that you're doing? No. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but here's the thing, though, is that like, yeah, she's immune to magic, but they could still punch her. <laughs> the guy's standing right next to her. You could, like, grab the egg or something. I don't know. Well, we're going to learn how physical combat works in a second. Oh, you're right. I don't right. know if you yeah, could just you. punch her. That's a lot <laughs> harder than you're making it out to be. You're right. I forgot about my own best worst. What was I thinking? But, yeah, but then fucking Statue Ivan remembers something that the pig fucker taught him. Seriously. Off camera. We get the Yoda moment. Yeah. Pig fucker Yoda shows up, you know, metaphysically to remind Ivan, who is now petrified by a magic spell, that like, hey, if you think positive thoughts, you can block the evil magic. And it works. Yeah. The fucking secret makes its yeah. way back in, even through Russian propaganda. He's just like Putin shirtless on a horse, Putin shirtless on a <laughs> and, <I'm not, laughs> and I'm not stoned anymore. I did it. He uses his happy thoughts to reverse the freeze spell. Yeah, exactly. And then and then he's like, he's like, ha ha, your sorcery is no match for my orthodox Christianity. And we get the like drat spoiled again moment. Right. Yeah. And they just leave. They're like, well, we did everything we could. Yeah. We, the evil <laughs> have been defeated. <laughs> yep. So but then we cut from there over to Piotr and Asya in some kind of fucking Turkish hookah den or something. <laughs> yeah. They, they're they're going to escape the Nazi warlocks, but they were just like, you know, let's have a hookah and a, and a chat before we go, because that's a nice Go right here. <laughs> well, yeah, so these two are still being imprisoned by the bad guys. These are the two that they still have to rescue. And Asya is explaining to Pyotr at this point. There's a hookah in the cell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they're being held in a room that has a hookah in it. Yeah. What it's so badly for one of the bad wizards to come in. Sorry, I left my hookah in here. <laughs> oh, does this not normally go here? You guys, I was about to ask you for a samovar of tea or coffee. No, well, you, you guys know. didn't smoke any of this, did you? Because it's actually opium. No. So, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so okay, but so but Asia explains that they're going to be the sacrifices for the big fucking meeting tonight between all the wizards, where they you know whatever sanctify the Antichrist. And then we cut to a different war room. There are two relevant war rooms in the third act of this movie. This one is Russian. Right. And I wrote my notes at this point. Oh, I get a dollar because, yes, it turned out that other war room was NATO. But I have to give back the dollar because I thought they would be coy about that. Right. This is where they just straight up say, oh, it's NATO. The other one was NATO, the North Atlantic Tra Treaty Organization. Those bastards over in Germany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but they but they explain that like. Uh, Robkin's there and they're like, yeah, I'm, I, you know, you're, we found your granddaughter. She's there, but we can't get past the NATO blockade to save Nadia. And he's like, is there anything that we can do? And he says, all we can do is pray. And also send submarines. We're going yes. <laughs> to, that, that is exactly the, the delivery, by the way. It is yes. literally all we can do is pray. <laughs> and we have nuclear. Also, we have submarines. submarines. <laughs> so, all right. 
but the one thing, of course, that NATO forgot about when they made their blockade was Victor, which I can't really blame him. I also had forgotten about this character. And so did you, podcast listener. He's the <laughs> guy who went honest. and got the full split helicopters with the kids earlier in the movie. Yeah, so, He's yeah. the Russian hero of the Balkan Wars, if you remember. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah, exactly. He's the one who merely witnessed war crimes, did not perpetrate them. Right. So we get him sneaking past the blockade, getting into Hogwarts. It's a fucking amazing, right? The, his his like early Metal Gear mission that he goes through here. He eventually gets to the server room and he's like, aha. And he throws a rod through one of the servers, which takes out everything. Takes out NATO. All the, the castle. It explodes the castle. <laughs> yes, the North out- Atlantic Treaty Organization <laughs> yes. is no more because, <laughs> because of this he- little server. <laughs> With a database on it. We'll even get a guy later going, they took out all 10 levels of our security. And he's like, yeah, they sure did, man. One fucking rod. Just, I guess it went all the way through. <laughs> Told you guys we should do 11. <laughs> yeah, we, we kept it all on one shelving unit. That's on this. <laughs> Redundancy, that's basic. Yes. <laughs> so meanwhile, we get Ivan and Nadia. They're sleuthing around somewhere else, looking through some computer stuff, which I feel like, they shouldn't be able to do now because that, that was a very important server. But they found files on all the various orphans. And they even found a file on him listing his weakness as vanity. And I'm like, was that an email from Satan? Because that was who knew <laughs> his weakness <laughs> earlier. But just then, some of the soldiers from the Hogwarts army find him and they get the drop on him. But then we get my best worst. We get the <laughs> greatest seven seconds in the history of animation <laughs> Because Victor shows up behind him and does a quick punchy kicky thing and they just fall down in ways that don't match up with the punches. He, the he does <laughs> he does a kick punch knee headbutt to also other moves too at the same time. He's got this great big smile on his face the whole time. You remember when you were a kid and you would do the like running, punching, kicking all at the same time? <laughs> he, some, I guess that's a Samba move. And it's all the moves at once, and he just kills them. So easy. I guess it's like the guy who was animating the legs and the guy who was animating the arms and the guy who was animating the face weren't allowed to talk to each other. <laughs> I'm attacking. No, I'm attacking. I, 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 I use my punch <laughs> kick. I get the cut right in the ass. It's so I did spinning pile driver. I exactly. love it so goddamn much. Somebody gift this for me and, and, and send it to me. It's so good. Anyway, so, so they've given up on all the orphans, but... But Asya at this point, they, they tell Victor, yeah, the Asya is the only one worth saving. And he's like, oh, wow. So three of the four Russians that we're extracting weren't here when this fucking mission started. Right. So we're really goddamn useless. Huh? And they're like, we're pretty, pretty close to useless. Yeah. So then we cut to the like opening speech of the World Wizard Congress where they're going to first introduce the Antichrist. Right. OK, so the, the plan is they're going to become extra evil magical warlocks because of the Antichrist neo-Nazi guy? Well, so the Antichrist is going to be able to take down the protection that has kept Russia from being able to, or from succumbing to their magic this whole time. Oh, Antichrist has like a disenchant spell. Uh, clearly, because he's Slavic, apparently. He can undo, with his hatred of Russia, he can undo their love of Russia. I don't know. But that's that's what they imply. So they're like, first order of business, yes, the Antichrist is here. Yes, he's Slavic. Second, those fucking Russians and their fucking magic proof love of God and country. Am I right? We got to do something about this. So the head wizard explains that in 30 minutes, they're going to start their wizard invasion of Russia. They're going to go full Napoleon on this shit, right? Yeah. Also, he does like a, here he is, the guy you've all been waiting for, the anti <laughs> And he's like, I'm going to start a land war in Asia. I think that's a good idea, right? Now. Yeah. No, but we never, yeah, we never actually even meet the fucking Antichrist. What's amazing is the characters run in the room and they are confused. They're like, well, that guy just very clearly introduced an Antichrist. Little girl sitting on a throne. Are you the Antichrist? And she's like, no, I'm not. And they're like, no. Well, then, well, then what was that guy saying? And he's like, I, I don't know, man. The Antichrist <laughs> had to run and take a shit right before yeah, he was supposed must to come have been. They couldn't animate. They're like, look, we've run out of mustaches. There's nothing we can do, guys. <laughs> we tried the purple hippo in a mustache and it, uh, our computers couldn't take it. We had some <laughs> personal photos on there as well. We only have three <laughs> gigs of memory to animate this entire movie. 
So yeah, so so now they're gonna before they introduce the Antichrist, they're gonna bring out Pyotr and Asya to sacrifice him and drink their blood. Elia, who is another of the traitor Russian orphans, is gonna do the sacrifice. So they lay Asya on the table and they're like, All right, so now just somebody just needs to pull this rope and that'll release the guillotine and her head'll come off. Pyotr, would you like to give it a go? And he's like, No, I'm the other Christian. Like literally everybody but me in this room would do that, but no. Obviously not. Well, don't worry. It's it's not scary. <laughs> That's literally what she says. She says, do it. It's not scary. Yep. And Piotr has to be like, no, I, that wasn't the reason I wasn't cutting off my friend's head. Do you think it was because I thought it was going to be <laughs> spooky? It was the, so the spookiness is what was turning me off? I also love uh, over and over again, Asya does like, like keeps leaning up to make a point, but then dutifully laying her head back under the guillotine when she's made her point. <laughs> Asya has an amazing line. They're <laughs> arguing about whether or not he should cut off her head. And Asya sort of gets up on an elbow and goes, I don't really understand how you guys are white mages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, but then Ivan slowly ambles in. Piotr slowly throws the guy behind. This is supposed to be happening quickly, but animation the animation in this movie really doesn't have that going for it. We get a bit more amazing punchy kicky, and just then the fire alarm goes off. So now Victor's not with him at this point. Victor sent them off on their own. He's like, hey, you go find your friends. I'll work out a way for us to escape. So and and, the, and he gave him a radio. So clearly Victor's plan was you walk into a room full of Earth's mightiest and evilest wizards and I'll pull the fire alarm like I'm trying to cut shop class. Yeah. Don't <laughs> worry, I'll be outside firing a machine gun, we can only assume, into a crowd of children. <laughs> so, yes. War criminal children, they are. <laughs> so, But yeah, he's managed to secure them a helicopter somehow and he's holding off unseen bad guys with a machine gun. Meanwhile, back at NATO, they don't like the look at this at all. They've set fire to Hogwarts and everything. Can I talk about the expression that NATO uses when they say things have gone wrong? So the, I assume, American tells the, I assume, South Korean? It's hard to tell. It's racist and badly animated. But the American goes, I can see it's not golf lobster. <laughs> yes, that is the translation. And I just we want to throw out there: I will be calling all things from now on not golf lobster. <laughs> so, so I believe the character's name was supposed to be Lobster, like that was his nickname. And he was saying, "Well, uh, I can see it's not golf." Yeah, he was talking to Lobster. Yeah, uh, I still have no idea what any of the words mean, but it was addressing <laughs> somebody named Lobster. Make it better, but yes. So, damn. I was really hoping people would buy our Not Golf Lobster t-shirts. We can still make the Not Golf Lobster t-shirts. We'll talk about that off the air. Or the one that's like, the, the, it's a little lobster and he's golfing. That's actually original IP now, if you think about yep. it. Yep. Yeah, right. And he's golfing and he's like, golf lobster, two thumbs up. <laughs> so, Not. Yeah. <laughs> but this, but NATO explains how their 10 levels of security had all, you know, gotten a rod thrown through them. Then we cut to the good guys escaping through a tunnel of green slime for some reason. Yep. Right. That was the other background they had. Nadia sure has learned the error of her ways and will not be trying to be a wizard anymore. Guys, the double dare hallway. Let's get out there. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then we wrap up on part seven, God's help. And we're going to start that part off back in Greece with the garden gnome and the pig fucker starting a very quick prayer service. Oh, oinky. I love that. Ah, what? No, you need to pray for the teenagers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, cool. all right, yeah, yeah. What were you saying? Nothing. <laughs> so Nothing? So, okay. So, meanwhile, at Hogwarts, all the baddies have caught up with all the good guys. And Professor Greed, to his credit, gives him a chance. He's like, hey, if you guys still want to just be wizard students, we will overlook the fact that you set our, uh, our facilities on fire and tried to kill all of us, which is excessively generous in my mind. I was going to say better than uh, certain members of this podcast were offered in their high school experience. <laughs> so, but they're like, no, we don't want to be your students anymore. And they start praying and they're, they all started a different, it sounds like a bad attempt at row, row, row your boat. They're all doing different <laughs> prayers slightly. Ah, Yeah. Yeah, the bad guys offer him like, okay, surrender. Or I guess if you don't want to do that, you can die. And Ivan looks around at all. I mean, he's like, what do you guys think? Die for a lie? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. 100% die. Yeah. We're Russians. But just then, 
Ivan remembers that he has a weird six-pointed cross in his pocket, and it's almost too late for that to matter to the movie. So he pulls it out. We realize once again that hand-holding object is way beyond their animation skill set here. But the cross glows so brightly that now Victor can tell where they are so he can land his helicopter there. Okay. The magical thing is just a flashlight. Yes. It ends up just yep. being a it's flashlight. It's just a flashlight. Yeah. And not only is it just a flashlight, but Ivan has a radio. He was communicating <laughs> with Victor on the radio earlier that he still has. So he could also say, hey, we're at the northwest corner of the campus. <laughs> so it's... it's Less useless than a flashlight. <laughs> exactly. I wanted to pull out the uh, the magical cross that he got from the gnome guy and be like, okay, well, I used the radio, so I guess the flashlight thing doesn't matter. I will use this as a big magical weapon. And then he throws it at him and it's just like, ow. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of sharp on the edge. Does that have six arms? Yeah, that's six arms. He's good. John the Baptist. <laughs> So Victor very slowly uh, lands his helicopter, very slowly sets up to shoot the baddies. The kids very slowly duck to give him line of sight. He just straight up shoots the Jew wizards, which I got to admit, I, again, I don't know why I was surprised at this point, but he was just like, and I was like, oh, all right. I guess we're just murdering the bad guys with guns. Well, so, okay, so he murders several of the bad guys, but he doesn't quite get Professor Greed. And I only point that out because of another T-shirt possibility. As they're flying away, Professor Greed looks up at the helicopter and he yells after him, they will meet you and feed you lead pies. Thank you. <laughs> what? I also thought I was having a stroke. So I couldn't help myself here. I tried to sort of sound out what he's saying. I think it's they're going to catch you and you'll eat lead. But mm -hmm. whoever wait yes like translated this was like feed you lead pies nailed <laughs> this it. This is <laughs> close enough. It's not golf lobster. That's my go-to condemnation now. So okay, so they're escaping by helicopter, but damn if NATO isn't there, about to fire a barrage of missiles at them. And Nadia's like, hey, we should pray to God for help. He really hasn't done a goddamn thing yet. I feel like he thinks that flashlight is going to be enough, and I don't think it is. So Nadia prays, and just then, a couple of Russian submarines pop up right next to the boat that's about to fire the missiles. So God sent submarines. <laughs> right. Also, I just have to point out that submarines popping out of the water, not the uh, trumpet moment that this movie is hoping for, because they just sort of like, boom. And we're supposed to be like, oh, the Russian subs are here. But instead, they just nothing happens. Well, right. Yeah. The the, uh, the, the apparently we're supposed to be thinking that the people on the boat were like, oh, oh they're, we, they're, they're looking. Wait until they're not looking. <laughs> Russian, Russian subs are based on movement. <laughs> <laughs> but then and then. We slowly back away from the burning wreckage of Hogwarts long enough to see the skulls of all the naughty wizard children that were massacred by our heroes. And in the background, we can hear their screams. Yep. And it's like the happy end. If they go yes. take a walk outside. Yes. Oh, my God, it's burning. That is the last shot of the, the the cartoon part of this movie ends with the smoldering corpses of their enemies. It's their shawarma shot. <laughs> so, OK, so then we cut back to like Hitler Youth or whatever to, to wrap things up in the live action part of the story. And we get this like, you know, wow, what a great story moment that the film can pat itself on the back with. Right. Mm hmm. I have to point out this tiny moment that one of the kids is like, well, whatever happened to that bad wizard from the beginning? And in this children's movie, yes. the narrator's like, oh, well, he was trying to kill himself, but he got eaten by ghouls before he could do it. And they're like, great. No further questions. <laughs> yes, that's actually what they say. in the Because I thought they were setting up a sequel, right? They're like, but did Leonard get away? And I'm like, oh, does he reappear in some sort of sequel? And the guy telling the story is like, no, they actually blamed him for the whole thing. He tried to kill himself, but the wizards captured him and uh, fed him slowly to ghouls for failing his mission. And the kids are like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream! <laughs> but nobody ever found out what happened to the wizards that escaped that, that didn't die in the fire, right? So there still could be a sequel. Oh. 
and the kids are like, okay, but this is just a story, right? And he's like, maybe not. And he pulls out the watch that they gave Ivan that he could tap three times and it would get the one that never came in it mattered in the, the butt watch. If I am not the person who intervened in that wizard school and stopped them from human sacrificing people using my love of Russia and magic, how do I have a watch? Exactly. <laughs> Scientific <laughs> proof. And the kids are all like, well, that's true. How would he have a watch? There's no such thing as watches without that. <laughs> wouldn't so, be nonsense. But then he explains that the the guy in the, that, that showed up in the helicopter at the very beginning of the movie, that was Ivan. And he, the guy telling the story, as Piotr and has been all, all along. And then he's like, and the reason I'm telling you all of this is because the wizards are rising again and now you will need to infiltrate them. So apparently they thought they might uh, might have live action sequel money coming. Yeah. And then he's like, and, and uh, in case it wasn't super duper clear, let me summarize the moral of the story so <laughs> Noah can't use that bit at the end. I know we uh, we got a little lost in the weed with the nor with the nur and the nun with the war crimes and that <laughs> guy who obviously fucked the boar. So can we just do like a quick quick run around the bush? Everyone say okay. We love God. <laughs> we love Russia. Right. We love God. We love Russia. Okay. Go. go, go. There you go. Oh, and then we also have to thank. Uh, there's a quick credit at the end that says translated by Mad Turnup. Thank you, Mad Turnup. Mad Turnup. Thank you for bringing us this. You are in my will now, Mad Turnup. MVP. <laughs> All right, so obviously this needs a little help breaking it into the American market. It's the greatest thing that ever happened, and we want more. So uh, any suggestions for a good tagline? Yes. How about kids versus wizards? A terrifying peek into the minds of the world's second largest nuclear power. <gasps> yep. Uh, kids versus wizards. Critical grace theory. Oh, nice. <laughs> well done. All right. So I guess that's going to do it for our review of kids versus wizards, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you and us back in for next time. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Just when you thought our delves into the world of pseudoscience couldn't get any dumber, we'll be watching a documentary about the danger of root canals. What? Next week, we will be viewing Root Cause. Oh, God damn it. All right. So with that, look forward to it. We're going to bring episode 393 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnik of drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check your life this week. For Heath and Ray, Eli Bosley, Gobman Illusions, promise to work hard to earn on the truck next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. That Fabergé egg that started World War I remains lodged in a butthole somewhere. All of those cadets went on to die in Ukraine. And the incompetent people who made this movie fooled your grandma into voting for Donald Trump. <laughs> they did, though. <laughs> Jeez. I didn't hear you, Heath, but I'm assuming you were. Uh, which is actually nice because you've been on a bit more of a delay than than Eli has for me. So if you guys are dead on, um, that's It'd be great. funny if Heath was in the other room getting a caramel and we thought we just couldn't hear him. You are there, right, Heath? I already got a caramel. Okay. <laughs> that's the important part. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights